Inflation hit the highest level since 2014. Are you concerned about inflation? Because the market seems to be. <laughs> well, as I uh, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, the inflation uh, figure it has one that has been anticipated. When we were uh, discussing the tax reform package, we did uh, mention to the public to expect an inflation uptick of uh, roughly seven tenths of one uh, percent, and uh, that has happened. And it comes from several factors, but not really all from uh, the tax reform. First of all, uh, there have been uh, an, uh, th there's been an increase in oil prices and that has uh, helped boost inflation rates. Uh, the peso has uh, depreciated a bit, uh, basically caused by the increase in interest rates in the U.S. And uh, those two factors, plus uh, bad weather, have affected prices of, uh, of uh, vegetables. Uh, the off-fishing uh, season has affected the price of fish. And strangely enough, our successful efforts in collecting taxes from cigarettes has actually boosted uh, our inflation rate uh, two-tenths of one percent. So all of these factors uh, have been, uh, have, been, uh, have, been co have caused the uh, slight uptick in inflation rate. You talked about the peso, which has depreciated, in your words, a bit, but it yes. is actually the worst performer in Asia over the past 12 months. Are you not concerned about uh, a depreciating currency? We have about 12 million people working abroad, and uh, they have families back home, and they send their hard-earned foreign currency back home. I think it benefits them a lot that uh, the peso value has uh, dropped uh, a bit. And, you know, ag again, when you say worst performing currency, uh, you're looking at a very short period of time. If you look at a period over 10 years, we're just about uh, average for the whole of Asia. And as I said, again, I'd like to repeat it, uh, probably we have uh, 50 million people uh, who rely on uh, their who rely on for, uh, work, foreign workers' earnings. We have a very healthy um, a business process outsourcing industry, which brings in around 25 billion U.S. dollars um, a year, and that helps us be more competitive. Our exports uh, have become more competitive in the world and have gone up significantly since the peso uh, value has gone down. Philippine growth has been in excess of 6%, yet yes. when you take a look at FDI, foreign direct investment, mm -hmm. it's still lagging behind nations which are way smaller, like Vietnam. Why is that, and will that be revised? Well, one of our basic problems has been that we lack, uh, we've been falling behind uh, our neighbors in infrastructure. And uh, we have, uh, you know, it, it's very expensive to move goods in and out of the Philippines. So that's why we are uh, spending a lot in improving our logistics with better ports, better airports, better roads, better bridges. And we think as these uh, come into uh, play, we will see a large uh, increase in foreign direct investments. In fact, last year we exceeded our target by almost 10%. So we had $8.7 billion come in last year. Uh, so we think uh, that, that uh, trend will improve. I want to talk about funding because to pay for the infrastructure plan, there are plans in the offing for samurai and panda bond issuances. Give us a sense of when and how much. Essentially, our funding plan for our infrastructure, around 25% of that will come from increased taxes. Uh, the balance will come from borrowings. Uh, we will, uh, of, the, of, the for, of the borrowings we will do, uh, we will source uh, about 75% locally from the local uh, peso market and around 25% uh, from abroad. 